Hi everyone. In this video we're going to find the natural frequencies for the same system that we used in our previous video. We're given the following variables. The first mass is equal to 10 kilograms, the second mass is half of that. The stiffness coefficient for the first spring is 1000 newtons per meter, the second one is 1500 newtons per meter, and the third one is equal to the first one, so 1000 newtons per meter. The first step to doing this is to find the governing equations of motion in matrix form. Um, we're going to use the FAST method that I showed in a previous video. Step number two will be to solve the following equation. The determinant of the stiffness matrix minus lambda times the mass matrix is equal to zero. We're going to solve for lambda. And the last step is to find the natural frequencies as the uh, square root of the lambda values that we're going to find. Now there's a note on the left side that says that in your textbook you might find the same equation but in a different form. And uh, the reason is that instead of putting the lambdas they put um, the frequencies squared and it's equivalent of course because of step number three. So let's get to it. Now remember that we are looking for an equation that has the following form, a mass matrix times an acceleration vector plus a damping matrix, which is going to disappear, times a damping vector plus a stiffness matrix times a displacement vector. Here it's going to be equal to a vector full of zeros. Now the mass matrix on the diagonals we're simply going to find the masses in order. Now we've done this before, but we're simply going to do it again as an exercise. The uh, damping matrix is uh, non-existent because there, there are no dampers. The stiffness matrix on the diagonals, we're going to find for each element the sum of the uh, stiffness coefficients of all the strings that are attached to that mass. And on the diagonals, we're going to find the negative values of the uh, stiffness constants of um, the springs that are attached to both masses. What I mean by that is that for mass one, we have both K1 and K2 attached to it. And then on the second column, first row, we have uh, only minus K2 because K2 is the only spring that is shared by both M1 and M2. Um, the same logic gives us minus k2 for the uh, other element. Uh, another property of this element is that it is symmetrical. Same thing goes for the mass matrix. And then for the um, second mass, we will get k2 plus k3 because both um, spring number one and spring number, uh, sorry, spring number two and spring number three are attached to that mass. All right, so step number one is done. Step number two is to solve the following equation. We're gonna do it manually. So the mass matrix, sorry, made a mistake here. So the mass matrix is M1, 10, 0, 0, 5. Actually, I made a little mistake. It's not the mass matrix. It's stiffness matrix. Sorry about that. K1 plus K2. K1 is 1,000. K2 is 1,500. So we get 2,500. Minus K2 is minus 1,500. It's symmetrical. And then we get K2 plus K3, so 1,500 plus 1,000 is 2,500 again. 
minus lambda times, this time it's the mass matrix, so 10, 0, 0, 5 is equal to 0. We're going to calculate the sum. So 2500 minus 10 times lambda minus 1500 does not change because the off diagonal elements are zero. And then we get 2500 minus 5 times lambda. All right, that's equal to zero. Now the determinant of a two by two matrix is simply the product of the first diagonal minus the product of the uh, second diagonal elements. We get 2500 minus 10 times lambda minus minus 1500 squared is equal to zero. That gives us 50 times lambda squared minus 37,500 lambda plus 4 times 10 to the 6th equals zero. To make this more simple, I divided by 50 and mentally you could probably do that. Um, you get minus 750 lambda plus 80,000 equals zero. The reason I'm doing the long form of this is simply because I'm not assuming that um, you're allowed any sort of scientific calculator that does this for you. You could just as well use some sort of CAS to solve this directly. But anyway, we're going to go ahead with it. Um, we're going to find that the lambda values are equal to, I'll just write the formula out. I know that everyone knows it, but whatever. I think it's probably the only formula that everyone knows by heart. That's equal to minus minus 750 plus or minus square root 4 times 1 times um, 80,000. And all of that divided by 2 times 1. So we get that lambda is equal to, um, I think we get 128, 621.2214. Now you always need to put these ones in ascending order because the natural frequencies that will be met, um, actually if, if you um, apply a certain excitation to a solid or a system with n degrees of freedom, then the first natural frequency that will cause resonance is the first one. So we put the smallest one here assuming that we go from lowest to highest um, excitation frequency. So we'll get that omega 1 is equal to the square root of 128.7786, which gives us 11.3487. And omega 2 is square root of 
or 621.2214. And that gives us 24.9243 radians per second. And that is it. I like this. We're done. As usual, if you want to have the PDF version of this worksheet, I've put a link in the description below. And as always, thanks for watching.